This video is the ultimate review on the brand new Opus Mega One Power Station. This is a 2000 watt inverter with 1024 watt hours of capacity that is expandable. And I have done a ton of testing on this and I'm gonna share with you a list of things that I've done and you'll be able to click throughout the video on the bottom through the timeline. So if you see something over here to the side that you're interested in, you can go directly to it. But if you stick around for the entire video, maybe you'll learn something about the Mega One you haven't seen anywhere else. And if sometime throughout the video, you become interested in purchasing a Mega One, be sure to check out the links in the description below because I'll have discount codes and ways that you can save money and help support the channel. And the Mega One is equipped with 13 different ports to charge different devices. You have two 100 watt USB-C ports and four 3.0 USB-A ports, four 120 volt outlets here that are a 20 amp max for each one of those. Then you have two barrel ports and your cigarette lighter um, charger over here. You have multiple buttons, and this is to turn on and off the DC inverter, the AC inverter, and this is for this side DC over here, and this is for connecting your Bluetooth or your Wi-Fi to the device. You can turn this off or turn this on. I don't have it connected to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth at the moment, so that's why we're seeing that flashing happen right there. Download that app by using the QR code that is placed on the right side of the unit under the handle right here. This is a pure sine wave inverter, 120 volts at 2000 watts of max output. And this is a verified pure sine wave inverter. I did that by using an oscilloscope. And you can see the sine wave right there. It's absolutely perfect. The way that I have this hooked up is this power cord runs into the oscilloscope itself to give power to it. Then this comes down here and reads the sine wave that's coming off of this outlet right here that's on the Opus Mega One. So we have a absolutely perfect pure sine wave inverter. And we verified that using the oscilloscope. Let's just turn it off, watch it flatline. And then we'll turn it back on and we'll get our reading start showing the sine wave again. That's pretty awesome. And I forget who the person that left the comment asked me to do a sine wave test when I have it under a load. And I want to make sure to do that because I thought it was pretty important to do that as well to see if we get any disruption in that when we have a load pulling off of the inverter. So let's turn this on. And that's going to bump us up to what almost 1400 watts 1300 watts and the sine wave are still perfect so that is pretty awesome that under a load we're not seeing any disruption in the signal itself with a capacity of 1024 watt hours it is expandable with the expandable b2 battery which can be connected into the port on the side right side of the unit you'll also see your solar charge input your ac input and your overload protection your solar input can be between 12 volts and 80 volts at 13 amps your ac input is between 90 and 140 volts at 12 amps and this is your overload protection right here. If something happens, you can reset right there. In my opinion, the portable power stations are your best method to go solar, especially if you're new to solar and you don't quite understand all the components within a solar system. This is an all-in-one unit. This has your solar charge controller. This has your inverter. This has your battery. This has everything that you need, your plugs, all the safety mechanisms that are already in place and are supposed to work correctly. And that's what I'm gonna be testing out in this video to make sure that they do. Not all portable power stations have been able to complete this test. This is a 12 volt uh, DC air compressor that plugs into the cigarette lighter. Under um, pressure, sometimes they fail, but yes, this one can do it. So let's go right here, turn that on. You see that we have pressure already in the tire so it can blow that tire up with no problem through the cigarette lighter on the portable power station 
I charged it back up to 100% and now I'm running a DC discharge test to find out the actual efficiency of the inverter when discharged with DC. Typically we're gonna see it right around 78 to 82% efficiency. I've set that to 9.9 .9 amps. You can see right there at the top and we can discharge a maximum of 10 amps. So I think that's pretty close to maxing it out to keep me from having any type of failures during my test. I'll come back with the actual number once this finishes. And although this test takes a long time to complete, I think it's very important to try to always include it when I'm testing out power stations. So we got about six hours left on this test and I'll come back with the final numbers. And the test is complete. And the number is very, very surprising at 889.6 watt hours out of 1,024 watt hours, giving us an efficiency of around 87%. And I can't recall testing a power station that came in at 86.8% efficiency on the DC output. Most of these power stations come in around 78 to 80% efficiency on the DC output. So this is a major plus for the Mega One. Another thing that I like to know about these power stations are how loud they actually are. So I got a sound meter and we're gonna get a reading. And the Mega One isn't the quietest power station that I've tested, but it does come in under 60 decimals, which is pretty good considering that we have this under a max charge at 1400 watts on the inverter. If you've ever thought about how much power it took to charge up a power station, this one takes 1.27 kilowatt hours to charge up 1.0 kilowatt hours on the battery. So it does take more energy to charge this up than what it will actually put out. So now we're taking 1.274, so 1,274 watts it took to charge this up. Now I'm gonna unplug this, put it over here and see how much power we actually get out of that. And to start this test, we'll need to reset the meter Get everything back to zero. So we'll go right there. I'll plug in a heat gun and then we'll discharge this at about 50%. So this is a 2000 watt inverter. I'm gonna discharge around 1000 to 1200 watts uh, to get this drained as quick as possible. This won't give us a perfect indication, but it will give us an idea. And if you guys see my other videos, you know that I like using these heat guns because they use so much power. So we'll turn this on, see where we're setting at, around 500 watts. So if we could take this up to 1,000. So that's right at 1,000. We'll let that do its thing and check back uh, probably in about a half hour, 45 minutes. And although the inverter has shut down, it still has enough power left in it to cool off all the internals. So let me take this off of here, get everything unplugged. This has been running for a little bit, just to kind of cool everything down on the inside, which is kind of cool that it leaves enough power in the batteries to do that. So it's a little bit loud for my microphone. So we'll just plug this onto the wall over here, turn it to function, and we have a reading of 88.7. So we have an efficiency of almost 89% on the AC discharge. And this is one of the most balanced inverters that I've seen as far as discharging from DC and AC with the efficiency. The DC was at almost 87% and the AC is right at 89%. Both of those numbers are really good. And now that I have this completely discharged, I'm gonna take this outside and connect it to the Opus solar panel. And we have a nice sunny day today, so it gives us a great opportunity to test out this 240 watt solar panel by Opus. And there are three legs on the back of the solar panels that allow you to stabilize and set the tilt of the panel. Because I only have one of these, I'm gonna test this out because it's designed to go with the power station, but I can also use these solar panels right here. These are 370 watts, these four right here, and those on the end are 400 watt solar panels. I do want to point out, I like this a lot. This cable that they give you, this wire, this is not one that's real short where you have to put the power station on one side always. You can set it way over here on this side. You can set it way off to the side on that side, way off behind it, or even way off in front of it. So that's a real plus. And we're getting a reading of around 185 watts out of the meter. 
So now I just want to undo these, connect it to the MC4 on the power station and see if we get something similar on the inverter. And these typically start off slow and then ramp up from here. And we did get a reading of around 181 and that's kind of where it's setting right now. So that is really good to have 180, I think it was 185 or 186 watts coming out of the panel. And then as it goes through the inverter, we're still seeing around 180, 181 uh, watts, 182 I just seen. So that is another plus for the Mega One. And I've changed the angle on this 400 watt solar panel. Now we're getting around 300 and 30 watts off of it. So I want to do an experiment to see if this large panel is okay to hook up to the Mega One because you may have panels already and you don't need to purchase any panels. This would be a good solution. And we should not have any problem with that because we're within the voltage range, the amp range, and the watt range. You wanted you could run an appliance while this is charging with solar no problem and I just wanted to show that because I have got the question a lot if you have it connected directly to solar can you power appliances at the same time? The answer is definitely yes. You can connect the solar and AC at the same time and have a max charging of up to 2200 watts. Right now we are seeing 1700 watts, which is well over the 1400 watts that we've seen when we just charge it up with regular AC or only AC. Now that we have the solar panel, and the AC connected, we're seeing a boost of 1700 watts. So if we had more solar input, we get that up to a maximum of 2200 watts of input to charge the batteries. That's super impressive because a lot of these power stations this size can't handle that type of input. What I'm experiencing is this is actually not showing 2000 watts or more it tries to stabilize and keep it running for a very short amount of time and i want to show you that so let me explain i'll turn this on i'll turn this on high so you'll see that that's 1500 watts it'll stabilize right close to 1500 watts let me turn this off if i turn on the heater on high you'll see that this goes up to about 2000 watts and stabilizes around 1200 watts. So it's come back down to 1150, maybe even 1100 watts when it gets stable. So yeah, around 1150. So let me turn that off. Let me turn this heat gun on. And I'm just going to leave it on that setting. We'll see it's right around 1000 watts, right? So now that we know what each one of these appliances use, I know when I turn this on, we're going to be around 1500 watts. I turn this on high, it's already over 2000 watts, but it's only showing 1800 watts. And then it kicks off because it's overloaded. So it's trying to stabilize the two. And when it can't do that, it's trying to regulate them. And when it can't do it, it gets overloaded and gives us this code. And how you reset this is press and hold the power button to turn it off. You'll wait to the off button or the off um, signal here turns completely off. And then you press and hold to turn this back on. And now you got the codes cleared. And something very important to note is if you overheat the inverter or the power station, this fan's gonna continue to run until it cools it off. And I'm gonna remove the heater from this test because this is the continuous output test of 2000 watts. I'm just gonna turn both these heat guns on. I'll make sure this is set around 1500 watts. And that's around 500 watts. And we're gonna run this from 94% down to zero at close to 2000 watts.
So I made it down to 7%, but it's overheated. And that's what the E025 error code is. And we have the flash up here. So the fan is running on this side to cool off the internals, which I thought this could possibly happen because we're running right at 2000 watts all the way down. But we did go from 94% down to 7%. That's something you typically will not be doing is maxing out to 2000 watts for an extreme amount of time. And in this scenario for this size of a box, this is a very stressful test on this power station. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing much more than maybe 1500 to 1700 for a long period of time if you needed to. But this was just to see if we could do 2000 watts all the way down to 0%. We did get down to seven, but the power station internals have heated up to where it thinks it should shut down and protect it. And if we look on the inside here, in the main back, you'll see that we actually get a reading of 164 Fahrenheit. And I'm actually very happy that it shut off because 164 Fahrenheit is starting to get pretty hot on the inside. And that's just the internals that I could pick up on the thermal camera. So I think it's doing a perfect job. It's actually passed every test that I put it through so far. The next test will be a UPS test for uninterrupted power supply. I'm gonna hook a light to this, connect it to the socket, and then we're gonna unplug it from the socket and see if we get any type of flicker. And for the uninterrupted power test, I have it connected to an outlet over here, running in here and it's charging up right now. And I got these two soft boxes. Once I turn them on, you're probably not gonna be able to see me, but this is where I'm gonna be able to find out if this actually causes a flicker in the lights when I unplug it from the wall. So it will automatically take the power that it's using right now to power these lights and it will switch over and send the power directly from this. Right now it's acting as a pass-through. So let's just unplug it. And we didn't even see a blink. That's extremely fast. It's supposed to be less than 20 milliseconds. And I think it was. Sometimes you'll get a slight blink when it kicks back on to the inverter, but I didn't even see anything there. So. As far as the uh, uninterrupted power supply, it passes that test as well. And to connect your Mega One to Wi-Fi, you'll click this button right here, hold it for five seconds or until the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi indicator flash. Press it one more time. Now it's in search mode. Scan the QR code, click the link at the top, download the app that best fits your operating system. Mine is an Android, so I'll click that. I'll have to click download again because I've already downloaded it and you'll want to open always update the app once you've got it downloaded you'll open it you'll create an account you'll come to this screen right here you'll want to click add device you confirm that those uh, indicators are still flashing click next give it a second while it scans now it's located the mega one you'll select it hit next fill in this information here or you can even use the use Bluetooth direct connection and connect it and it takes it just a second to add it as well it's added successfully up in the right hand corner click the finish and now you're connected to the opus mega one and my final thoughts on the opus mega one is there is one item that i would like to see improvement on and that's when you overload this system or it overheats it takes it a very long time to cool off so the fan continues to run for a very long time to cool down the components on the inside i wish there was a way that they can make that happen faster that's the only thing that i have negative really to say about the power station it's not that uh, it does this at all times it's only when you overload it and you overheat the actual internals of this. So if you're using this on a, a light load or a medium load, I don't think you'll ever experience that problem. However, if you're sticking this inside of a box, which I wouldn't recommend to do with any power station, but if you do that, then you're probably gonna overheat it and it's gonna take a long time for those fans to actually turn off once you got it overloaded. And so once you reset it and get it working again, then your fans are gonna be turned on for a long period of time. So that's the only uh, negative thing I really got to say about the power station. That could see improvement, but with every great product, there's always room for improvement. That's what I found about this power station. 
And would I recommend it? I absolutely would because I don't think that you can even build this power station by buying the individual parts and trying to put it together yourself for the price point that they're offering this to you for. This is a quality power station. I've tested it and I put it through some pretty extreme tests and I've tested on regular use and it passed every possible test. The only thing that I found negative about it was the uh, overload, how long it actually takes it to cool down. But other than that, this thing is performing exceptionally well, and I would definitely recommend the Mega One.